Morning YouTube, Dan Gastu here. Um, today we're going to do a steering replacement on the boat. Um, this thing going to involve replacing the uh, steering cable, which is one of these sort of Teleflex um, Sea Star cables, um, and also the helm. You can buy these as a kit, um, so the helm sort of comes in the box, they come together, um, or you can buy them individually. So it really sort of depends what's wrong with your steering, how far you'll go with this. Um, I'm not sure whether we've got a problem with the cable, the helm or both in this one. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the cable from the outboard because if you have a problem with your steering, it can be uh, sort of a stiffness in the pivot tube in the outboard itself. So I'll post a link to the video on cleaning that up. Um, or it could be a problem with the helm. Now, the best way to check that is just to simply separate the two systems. If you can suddenly turn the wheel really easily and smoothly, chances are it's your outboard. Um, but if you disconnect them, the outboard's moving really freely by hand and you still can't turn the wheel, you know it's something to do with the helm or the cable. So the first thing we'll do is just take them apart and have a look at where the problem lies and then we'll start doing the replacement. So this outboard's pretty new and the steering's quite old. So in this case, I'm actually quite confident it's the steering. Uh, it's also skipping teeth, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty clear the case. But if it was just stiff, um, Disconnect the, um, the arm here going to the um, to the steering cable. Uh, just be careful you don't lose these washers or the nut in the in the drink when you do that. Um, and then you should be able to turn the outboard quite freely. So this is how you you separate the two. So I'll just undo this nut and uh, we'll see what the two feel like separately. So in this case, it's a uh, 14 mil nut. And then you just need to lift this up and just make sure you don't lose that washer. So now these two are independent. You can see this outboard actually moves really smoothly, as you'd expect from a relatively new outboard. If that was really hard to turn, then you'd start to suspect that um, you've got some corrosion uh, and stiffness in that pivot tube. But in this case, the motor's fine, so the steering problem definitely comes from the helm and the cable. So now, in order to pull this cable through, um, we need to undo this collar here, um, which is all that really attaches it, but I then need to be able to push this cable through. It's quite a stiff cable, so I'm just gonna cut all these cable ties and actually start by undoing the other end so that we can pull it through. So I'll jump up to the helm end, I'll show you that end. So here you can see the cable coming in um, from the outboard. Comes in, wraps around, and heads out here. This should actually have a sort of a tube on it that stops it rusting like it is, um, that holds the grease in. Uh, and then on this particular model, it's this bolt here that holds the cable in. So if I turn uh, the boat to starboard, oh, get around here and wind it. The cable's coming in and this is locked. If I pull this out, there was a 10 mil nut on it by then. Um, and as I turn it, it'll actually push the cable out. So by removing whatever locking mechanism it has, in this case it was that bolt, and then winding it to starboard, will actually feed the cable out. So I'm gonna feed that all the way out, and then I'll start undoing those cable ties. So now this uh, cable's free from the rest of the boat, means we can push it in. So I'm just going to undo this collar. Um, if you can, when you start, you know, I actually sprayed this yesterday as well. A little bit of penetrating oil never hurts. And I'm just going to use a, uh, a shifter for this. Now what's happening here is a reasonably common situation where this collar's got a bit of corrosion and it's actually fused to this sort of swaged part of the, the cable here. And if I keep turning this, eventually there'll be enough spring in this cable to wind it back. So we need to disconnect this from this. And we can do that by uh, just hammering this part in just to try and break that. So I'll just put this camera on stand and we'll give that a go. The other thing you can try and do is just get some more strips on this part. And 
then just spin them in opposite directions. Now, there we go. So this one's not too bad. So now I can wind this nut off. But if you do have this spinning with this, um, one of the other things you can do is once you've got this out a little bit, is just try and knock that in with a, the edge of a chisel. You don't have much metal to get on. Okay, so once this is off, um, this is actually normally free to slide along here a bit further. Um, right, until it hits there. So once this is off, you can push this cable through. Now this can be tricky too in that quite often, uh, I'll just move this camera and show you. Quite often, because you've got the entire length of this rod to come out, this will start hitting here before this is all the way through. So the way to help with this is actually to wind it all the way in. But of course, getting caught up filming, I actually didn't do that before I disconnected this end. Uh, but having said that, this is now free to move. Um, you probably won't be able to move it by hand, but if I just hammer on here now, um, this will actually push this cable out, this end out. Um, and once it's all the way out, then I'll undo this again and we'll start to remove it. So sorry about that. So um, definitely have the cable wound all the way in before you begin removing this. But if you forget, just hammer on it, it'll come through. So this is now pushed all the way in, hammer all the way in which means this ends all the way out. And now we're ready to disconnect this again and uh, start pulling that, that uh, rod through. So now this collar's undone. If we start hitting this now, it'll start coming through. Now, depending on how seized it is, you may just be able to pull the cable through like you can with this one. Otherwise, I just keep a little, uh, if I can find it. Yeah, I just keep a little length of uh, steel rod like this, something that's big enough to hammer this through, but um, not so big that it's gonna, there's any chance that this will get stuck in the pivot tube instead. So by the time he pushes this out, you know, you wanna be able to just pull this out. So something around this diameter, quite loose, but strong enough is ideal to uh, hammer this uh, rod out if it happens to be stuck. But in this case, it's loose enough to pull. So that little pole did come in handy after all. So we're disconnected now, I'm just going to pull this through if I can, otherwise I'll pull the whole cable this way. Alright, so we've got the cable out now. Um, next thing I'm going to do is take the steering wheel off because we're going to replace the helm at the same time. We're going to do, do a new helm and a new cable. So I've got a whole video on taking the steering wheels off the boats, but I'll, so I'll do it quickly now. I'll put a link to that video as well. Um, but next step is getting the steering wheel off and then unbolting the old helm. So step one, just pop the uh, centre cap off and the nut here, let's have a look, right, that's too loose, yeah 19 mil. so we'll just pop this off quickly. Once again, just look out for the washer. Now this, you can see, I don't know if you can see clearly on camera, but the, um, the spindle's moving with the wheel. It looks quite corroded. This is what that video, other video is all about. I'm just gonna give it a little spray and then start attacking it using all the methods I used in that other vid. So if you wanna see about getting this off. Um, in this case, we're trying to save this wheel. Uh, in that other video, I was replacing the wheel, so I ended up being a bit more destructive in getting this off. Um, this is also completely metal, which is good, so it means it's easy to use a bit of heat or whatever. So I'll put a puller on this. It's my sort of preferred method to using some sort of puller, um, but we'll see how we go. Yep, that's about par for the course. 
Okay, so it turned out that actually that had popped off when the um, when the puller fell off. It actually had loosened it. Um, this is actually not a bad one to have got off because the whole frame here is metal. Um, if you can pull in from right behind here, it's good. It really just depends what sort of clearance you've got between the bezel here and the and the steering wheel, whether you can fit that in. But if you can, it's a good strong place to pull from as well. Now this uh, Woodruff key. Water in there. It's a bit stuck. I'm just going to grab some pliers and I'm going to pop that in my little parts tray. There's nothing complicated about boating or boat mechanics in particular jobs like this other than corrosion. Not complicated. Just corrosion always makes an easy job hard. If you can't yell at me because it's my screwdriver. So now there's just a couple of Phillips head screws holding this bezel off. If we take that out, then we'll be able to get to the bolts holding the uh, helm to the dash. So in here, um, we're not going to worry about these bolts. These bolts hold this bracket on. It's these three that hold the um, the helm in, um, and they've got some Allen keys on by the looks of it. Make sure we can crack all of these and then I'll use the other end of the uh, Allen key to get them out quickly. So as I get this last one I'm just going to reach behind and just support the helm so it doesn't drop. And there we go. Nice old rusty helm. So let's start putting this back together. I think the first thing I'll do now is just put the new helm in. So I'll go and grab that and we'll um, just get that in position and uh, start putting new cable in. So here's our nice new helm. Um, just going to feed this through. Um, you can obviously put these either way. So which side it feeds in and out of uh, depends whether your cable's running down the port or starts the starboard side of the boat. Okay, so this is now tightened up again. And next thing I do is just put the uh, steering wheel back on because we're going to use that to wind the cable in. Oh, almost forgot. Need to finish my coffee. Um, just put that bezel on first, obviously. Certainly not going to get it on after the wheel. Drift key again. Now with this, um, we, we can put a little bit of anti-seize or something on the the shaft there just to make it a little bit uh, easier to get off next time. Washer and nut. You don't need to torque these down too much. If you do, you'll just push the wheel onto that flared spindle really hard. You just don't want it coming undone. The the Woodruff key does all the work in um, in um, stopping it from uh, spinning on the shaft. Um, and I can already feel that's much smoother than the original one. There's also less play. The other one actually had quite a lot of play forward and back. So that's 
already a lot better. All right, let's get this new cable on. Now this is a pretty new motor, so the stiffness wasn't here. As you could see, we'd actually pull it out by hand. But if it was an older motor, and this was really gunked up with old grease, now would be a great time just to get some sort of like a bottle brush or something and some degreaser and actually clean this tube out before you put new grease in. Um, now I don't have a grease gun with me. Um, that's an important part of it. I'm actually just going to borrow a little bit of grease, which is still nice and red, so it's not too old, obviously. Just lubricate this uh, in a bit. Um, but I will talk about uh, greasing it once we've finished and got it in. So if this shaft is hard to get in, um, I've actually just got this old pair of rusty multi-grips that I use for all these sorts of jobs. It's a bit, uh, it's probably not the uh, abuse of tools, but I'll also just grip this with the multi-grips. Then actually just sit on the multi-grip. Let's get the tightening. So once uh, you've pushed the cable all the way in, tighten this nut up. And make sure you do this one up all the way. It needs to have every thread needs to be snug. If this um, collar comes off, you've lost steering. And then while we're here, I'm just going to return this. I'll just go grab the uh, washers and nut for here. So, one washer on here, drop it in, washer on the bottom of the nut. Alright, sorry, camera went flat then, so it's a bit later now. Um, so, this one, um, once again, a bit like the other end here, if, if this comes undone, you've lost your steering, so it's really important that this is done up snugly. Um, this should be a nylock a new nylock, lock tight, whatever you want, uh, spring wash it, some mechanism to make sure that doesn't vibrate off, because if it pops off, and this pops off, and you're going at speed, the outboard will just flip to one side, and yeah, it won't be pretty. So just be really careful with both ends of these. So to do this, I'm just going to take that uh, protective cover off the spiral cable, and then uh, get the old I'll uh, push this back a bit, and then we just have to get the uh, start of the cable in here. Um, there we go. And then if I turn the helm, there we go, it'll just start to wind it in. And as it winds, comes out the bottom like that, and we just have to give it a bit of a helping hand to align that outer part of the cable, so it pops in, I think I'm going to need two hands to do this, so I'll just pop this camera down. Okay, so if we keep winding, eventually gets to the uh, limit of travel, it'll pull this in, you'll hear it click in, and it's this bolt here that um, that locks the cable in and stops it from popping back out again. So I'm going to put this bolt in. Depends on the mechanism. Some of them have a uh, like an R clip that goes in a little hole. Um, so there's a few different designs. So just read the manual on how your the locking mechanism works, whichever one you've got. This 
is just the uh, cover that was missing before. So run that over the excess and once again it just... Oh. Locks in with a nut. Now I know some of you will have noticed that uh, I forgot to put this little uh, grease seal cap on the end here. So I'll just quickly pop this off. Clearly needed a second coffee this morning. So these are the two grease nipples you use to put some grease into these bushings um, and into the tube. Now, when you put grease into here, you just need to make sure you've got this pulled all the way in. So I'm just going to go up to the helm and uh, turn the wheel so that's in. And that's the position you want this in when you when you um, when you grease it. You don't want to uh, have the motor all the way turning to starboard. You want it turning to port in this case. Either way, it's when this is in. And the reason for that, I'll show you on the old one. So the reason is now this is uh, fully retracted, which we did to remove it. But as it comes out, this casing pushes out, and there's a thinner cable behind it. So if it's pushed all the way out when you grease it, you'll put a whole lot of grease in behind it which can actually mean that it can't steer in the other direction. So by doing that, you make sure the grease goes onto this here and not just backing up behind it and blocking it from coming back in. And then now just a final test. It's all looking good. Now this cable, as you may notice there too, is a little bit too long for this boat. Unfortunately, this boat's needed for work and um, it'll take a couple of, uh, at least a week to order a new cable. So I'm just going to see what I can do to sort of keep that slack somewhere out of the way. Now when you finish, if your wheel looks like that, and your motor's dead straight, I'm going to undo these and rotate the wheel. This um, spline only has a single uh, notch for the woodruff key, so we can't actually take the whole wheel and move it. So I'm just going to undo these uh, Allen keys. I wish I had a cordless drill with me, but they're all in the workshop. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm just going to undo them all, rotate the wheel, and do those up again. Well, that's that job done. Um, I guess there's just a couple of things to say in wrapping up. Um, one is, in all mechanical repairs, just make sure that you've confirmed a particular part has failed before you replace it. Don't just replace parts because it solves someone else's problem. So that's where that first step of isolating it and determining whether the problem's caused by the helm, the cable, or the pivot tube and the outboard is kind of a really important first step. Um, the other thing I guess is just about tools, you know, like in this video I, I think I hammer on a, a, uh, on a screwdriver and on a pair of multi-grips. Um, some people get a bit precious about uh, abusing tools, but um, at the end of the day tools are there to sort of make your life easier, you're not there to, to sort of make their life easier. Um, and you've really just got to weigh up what they cost and what it's worth to you. You're not going to use a uh, $400, you know, diagnostic computer as a hammer if you don't have one, you know. But if I can install 10 pivot tubes um, or 10 steering cables with a pair of multi-grips before they break, then, you know, like it's a couple of dollars per install and it's well worth it. Um, if you do have the right tool for a job, fantastic. But if you don't, just have a look at what the tool's worth, what the job's going to take. Um, you know, I don't believe in being too um, dogmatic about that sort of thing. Um, so just, just something to bear in mind, that's all. So thanks again for watching. Um, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.